So you think your SketchUp model is ready for analysis in Sapphira. Here are the last few things you should check to ensure fast, accurate analysis. 1. Check total plane count. Models that are too complex can take a long time to analyze, and even cause an analysis to fail. While many factors impact complexity, including the building form and number of zones, plane count is one of the major factors. You can find your model's plane count by going to Model Info and clicking on Statistics. This model has 515 planes, which is actually fairly small. Sapphire's limits are 30,000 total planes, 5,000 glazing planes, and 500 shading planes. If you have a model that exceeds those limits, see our video on complex models. But in any case, it's often good to purge unused elements and fix problems in the model just to ensure that uh, the model is as simple as possible before you begin analysis. Number two, check visibility. Make sure only analysis elements are visible and everything else is hidden. This means hiding elements like topography, landscape elements, and any surrounding buildings that are not required for shading on the primary building. We recommend setting up a scene with this visibility saved so that it's easy to return to a view that can be used for Sapphire analysis at any time. Number three, check entity assignments. Navigate to the entity palette and click on show entity types to see how Sapphire has interpreted each plane in your model. I recommend isolating each type of entity in order to check each type individually and make sure that it is assigned correctly. As a final check of square footages, I also like to take a look at the square footage listed in the analysis tab. If this does not roughly match your expectation of the square footage of the building, chances are some of the floor plates are not tagged correctly. Number four, check the location of your building with regard to the origin, or the 000 point in SketchUp. Your model should be near the origin in SketchUp, which is the intersection of the green, red, and blue axes. If a model is thousands of feet away, it can have a hard time being identified for the purposes of analysis. In addition, if you're doing daylighting analysis, be sure that the ground floor is at z equals zero. This is where the ground plane is automatically added to simulate reflectance off the ground surface. Finally, if you're using room-by-room -room zoning in the web application, be sure to check the zones in your model. I find that the easiest way to do this is to isolate the floor plates using the entity palette and then click through the different zones in the model to be sure that each one is modeled as an individual plane. And with that, your model is ready to be analyzed.